Yes. Okay, if you hear any noise in the background, lift your voice up a little loud. Because when I. <laughs> hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of. Hey, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of. I'm sorry, go ahead. I gotta think of a song in my head. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Coco. I am Carla Chapman, and this is MJ, as he wants to be called. We coffee. I can't. I and this is Marse, just the first just day. The first. <laughs> we are the owners of, I was about to say Coffee with Coco. We are the host of Coffee with Coco, but also the owners of Coco Beans Coffee. We are here on location. That's what we like. That's what I'm gonna start saying. We right. are on location. Y'all know I ain't gonna tell y'all where we at, right. but we definitely have our cups of coffee. And we're about to get into this conversation. Um, let me catch up. I know y'all noticed that my hair is different. Right? Love it though. I can't swing my locks no more. But we rocking that little But bit. yeah, my boo helped me cut my hair off. Call that a TWA. Uh huh. So I think I'm gonna just rock it short for a little bit and then let my afro grow out big and then we'll see where we go from there. But I like it. She back. She back in business. So yeah. I think it's sexy on you. I, I really like it. You haven't said that. You just like, I like it. Yeah, I pick and choose my moments, but I like it. I do Thank like, you, man. I like it a lot, actually. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. I think it looks good on me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, uh, what, we, what are we talking about today? Like, how's your week been? Yeah. Because we well, said we were going to kind of catch up. Like, the week for me, like, has been pretty cool. Like, it was it started out okay right mm -hmm. and then like i was in the middle of starting my workout and then you know we had a family emergency that we had to respond to um mm -hmm. you were starting your workout when i was I... actually starting oh, my workout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's been a busy week yeah it's been a busy week to mm -hmm. say the less to say the least and then you know it's just been crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, it was actually unexpected for me. Like, honestly, I didn't expect. The busyness? Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I did. Was, I was like. <laughs> he was so calm. He was so calm. I'm like, okay, look. When summertime is over, we get back into business. And that's really what it's been like. Yeah. So we had to, like, pull the calendar out, put everybody's stuff on there. And we still don't have everybody's stuff on there. Mm -hmm. um, so one started band camp this week. And it's his senior year. Like you said, the other one is going to college next week. Yeah. And then the other one is working on his thing. The other one is on doing his thing. It's just a lot. And then we got our thing. Yeah. Like we got our separate things and then we have our things together. So it's just been yeah. busy. And we got the baby that's not here who texted me yep. and stay in contact. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you yep. know, it's, uh, it's a lot going yeah. on. It's a lot. Yeah. So Monday, like you said, you were working out and then I kind of stopped the workout. Yeah. yeah. So I got a text sitting on yeah. the porch and that text said, you ever get those text messages that say, um, call me when you have a moment, but the, the person doesn't call you. They say, call me when you have a moment. It's I, it's, it's I automatically know like, okay, something is going on. Right. So instead of calling right away, I gave myself like 10, 15 minutes, I think. Yeah. I looked at it and I kind of sat there cause I wanted to get my brain like ready. Cause I was working on something for, I was working on that newsletter ah, to put on the website. We did put that out though, didn't we? I haven't put it out yet because I wow. stopped working on it. But I was almost done working with it. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I got that. So I paused and I just kind of sat there. Then when I reached out to her, that's when she told me that my biological dad, mm -hmm. I'm going to say my dad, my dad is right. sick in, in the hospital. So it kind of went from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, how'd you feel like getting that type of news that, you know, your biological father was in the hospital. And initially we didn't really understand the severity. Right. 
I know you told me you were gonna ask me that question already, mm -hmm. but this is the authentic, <laughs> right? Because right. I said, I asked him like, what are we gonna talk about? What you gonna ask? Yeah. And he said, I just kind of wanted to flow, but I knew he was gonna ask that question. Yeah. But just now when you were asking it in my head, I was like, I'm thankful mm -hmm. that we are having this discussion because I haven't sat to process it. Uh, Not even how everything is going. Right. Like I've been quiet, but right. I haven't really been like, okay, how did I feel? Like I haven't done that which is probably why I've been overwhelmed. Yeah. So, uh, how did I feel when she texted or how did I feel about the news? Like, like how did she, how did, first of all, how did you feel when you got the text? I know for me, like, when I get those type of text messages, like, I got a homeboy that does that all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he knows I love him. I love him. It's loud I love him to Sorry, life, right? I love him to life. Mm -hmm. But there's times when he would just shoot me these random texts and I'd be like, so let you me are, call right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> let me just call you because yeah. those text messages they don't have any emotion attached to them. It's almost like getting those texts that say, "Are you busy?" Right. Well, I don't want to say yes because if I'm not, <laughs> right. Why so, not just like, call me? Right. But so, I get it. When I got it, mm -hmm. uh, if I can put it in a phrase or something, yeah, it's like your butt cheeks clenching up. <laughs> 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 that's how I felt like yeah. super tight like I know something is wrong yeah because it wasn't her usual way of texting right. like she uh, like gotcha. there was no uh emojis and all that kind of stuff it was yeah. just like hi cousin when you get a chance call me yeah so I was like okay something is wrong so I was nervous but the news of it brought me back to the first time mm. that she sent me news so yeah. years ago I think that was in like 2014 mm -hmm. So a little history is that me and my dad, I didn't grow up with my dad. Um, I saw him when I was little, but don't remember any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't meet him again until my adult life in mm -hmm. 20, 2014. But he ended up having a car accident, a motorcycle accident. And this cousin who texted me on Monday is the same cousin who found me on Facebook. Wow. So she found me on Facebook. We were kind of Facebook friends, if I'm not mistaken by that time. And she sent me a message to let me know that he was in the hospital. So at that point, I left Oklahoma to drive to Texas to visit him in the hospital. That was the first time that I met him. Yeah. Um, so it kind of took me back to that, where it was mm. just like, here we go again. And I remember the feeling back then, I wanted to make it down real quick. Yeah. Because I hate to say this, but I was like, he might die. So I felt like That's that. Genuine. I felt like that again. Like, dang, we haven't had no time together. Right. I, so I told her that on the phone. I was like, I'm on my way today. Right. And most people, I know it's not far, but most people would be like, okay, I'll be there tomorrow. And I'm like, what if he dies? Right, right. So that's how I felt. But I was, I love that she reached out to me because a lot of times family wouldn't tell you stuff. Wouldn't tell you nothing. Yeah, and I don't know anybody else really like that on that side of the family. Yeah. So I like our relationship. It's pretty dope that you know she reached out to you mm -hmm. that's number one like I, I do like I would appreciate that you know what right. I mean like thank you for telling me you know what mm -hmm. I mean even though it is kind of touchy or whatever you know and you never know how mm -hmm. a person's going to take it you know in that type of situation right. I would have been grateful that, that, that the call was made the text was, was sent out mm -hmm. um, so I, I was in the back of my head I was like man I really appreciate mm -hmm. the uh, information being shared especially for you I did you know yeah and then like honestly when you came in where I was when you came and found me and you gave me the information right I was standing there like okay so when you leave you were mm -hmm. I was like mm -hmm. let's let's just go like we don't have but to. you did it in a respectful way though you yeah. didn't just say when like we you said are you going or like you wanted right. to make sure I was okay with you coming with right. me. Mm hmm Cause I'm not, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's that space invasion yeah. thing, man. I don't yeah. like that. I appreciated so, it. I'ma always extend, you know, the opportunity for you to be like, no, I want you there. Right. Or no, I think this is something I need to handle on my own. Mm -hmm. So when you was like, no, I want you to go with me, I was like, cool, let's go. Yeah. Like there was no question in my head that that's I was on board. Like I yeah. was like, yeah, let's get let's get it, cause. I needed that in that moment, even though in those situations, I get kind of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and thinking in my head, like, I got to do this, this, and this. So I wasn't like, oh, can you hug me? Or 
Yeah. But you, like, you showed up like that. Yeah. Like, okay, I got you. We got this. And yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get it. Mm-hmm. Like, get, I think getting on the highway mm-hmm. for us was a little different. Like, what you mean? Like, that's when I really saw, like, concern hit me. Like, before that, it was more like I'm nervous to enter into this space right now. Right. But once we got in that car and started it, started out in that direction, mm-hmm. like, I saw, like, true nerves hit you. And I was like, oh, okay. All right, this is different. Like, I'm seeing that emotional response now. Mm-hmm. And then, like, that's the reason why I wanted to make sure we prayed and just, right. you know, we took a moment before going inside and just, you know, let it be known that I'm with you. Like, I'm going to encourage you. Like, no matter what happens, when we walk out of here, we're good. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to be good. We're going to be straight. So when we leave out of here, just know it's you and I. When we're going in here, just know it's you and I. Right. And God's got both of us. So mm-hmm. that that was something that I really, really enjoyed about going down. But how did you feel when we, when we got there? The same way that you're saying I was on the highway. (laughs) In my head, I'm thinking, like, I don't remember the Mm. whole nerve thing. Like, I hardly remember the trip going down. Mm. Uh, But I remember when we pulled into the hospital. Yeah. I did not want to get out that car because I I didn't want to get out because I didn't know what he was going to look like. Ah, got you. So it was that. It was that him and I haven't seen each other. As close as we live to each other. I hadn't mm. seen them in over a year. Maybe more. Really? Mm, been a while. Um, we mm. don't talk. I looked at my phone. Um, I did send him a picture of me and the boys on Christmas. And yeah. I said Merry Christmas. But, yeah, we didn't really communicate like that. So, mm-hmm. I just didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I was nervous. I could tell. Yeah. There were a lot of different emotions because... Um, Like when me and my cousin were talking, there was this thing of the state of health he's in Mm -hmm. and how he's being taken care of. So when I got here, when I moved back to Texas in 2018, I had a dream Mm -hmm. that he lived with me. And I automatically woke up from that dream and I was mad. Like I was pissed off because I'm like, I'm not about to take care of somebody who never took care of me. And I know that sounds very selfish, but that was my true human emotion. Right, right, Like, why would I know? Yeah. Um, But also know the heart that God gave me. So it's like, okay, God, was that a glimpse? Yeah. Like for a long time I had asked God, is that what it was? So then when I saw him those years ago, me and uh, Zay went down to visit him. I started thinking, like, maybe he is supposed to live with me. Right. And then I let that thought go. So now fast forward to this situation, I'm like, okay, is God saying I'm supposed to, he's supposed to live with me? So it was like having that battle, too. Yeah. Like, thinking about that is still the fact that he doesn't love me the way I need to be loved. Mm. Uh, it's mm. hard. It's hard. It to, is hard. Yeah, it's hard to take care hard. of somebody who doesn't take time to even get to know you. Yeah. So I, I'm still battling with that. Still thinking about I, that. I, I kind of saw the battle happen too, uh-huh. as it relates to that, like, um, because there was a point when I heard the the comment like, "Oh, I may have to go to assisted living," and I didn't know if that comment was because he was waiting for you the to invitation? invite, yeah, mm-hmm. or if. He was trying to see like what your reaction was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, what did I say? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. But I was proud of you. Right. I, I was proud of you for like not saying anything at all mm-hmm. because I was like, that's difficult. Like you have to look this man eyeball to eyeball that actually was not present, mm-hmm. and you're saying I know your condition. Right. But I'm uncomfortable with even giving an answer to this. Right. So I was proud because I was like, you know what? That lets me know that you're going to hear from God before mm-hmm. you ever accept that moment mm-hmm. or you ever accept that responsibility. Yeah. And that that was a proud moment for me because I was like, I'm going to always be able to trust 
that she's not gonna move until God tells her to. Mm -hmm. So I was like, kudos to you in that moment. And I, I actually smiled internally. I don't know if I smiled and anybody right. could see it, but I actually smiled internally because I was like, that was real adult of you. Mm. Very That's adult growth of you. because yeah. years ago, I did not understand boundaries. Yeah. So I would have said yes to it, even though I know it would have put me in a bad situation. Yep. And right now, like when we got ready to leave the house, just hearing our son, I won't say his name, mm -hmm. saying, hey, mom, God, I feel like God told me to tell you, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. I needed to hear that confirmation from God yeah. before I went on my way there. Because sometimes I do feel like with both my parents, I have not, I don't want to say, I. you know what, I'm not going to sugarcoat for them. Please pause. Don't. pause. Authentic Because <laughs> I was about to. Authentic moments. We need yeah. Um, they have not been the best parents. They have not. Um, but I've always tried to honor them anyway. Yeah. yeah. And forgetting that there's a whole bunch of things in the Bible attached to honor. Mm -hmm. So it does tell you to honor your parents, but they're also are some instructions that God has for you to receive that honor. Right. So I'm like, if you haven't honored me, right. or you haven't honored what God told you to do as a parent, right. then I'm not obligated to do those things. Right. I can still respect you. I can honor you by creating a boundary. From a distance. Yes. Yeah. But it's like, years ago, I would have accepted and just been like, okay, here I go again, taking yeah. care of them. Yeah. Like, they're my kids versus the other way around. Mm -hmm. But this time, I'm just, I love him. Mm -hmm. It's weird because even though he has not been around, I love him like he has been around. Right. But I'm not going to allow someone to just come in and just use me up. Mm -hmm. um, and take advantage of me, not saying that that's what he's doing. Because right. he's in a situation where he can't take care right. of himself. Right. So if God told me to do it, I would do it. But I'm not going to do it unless God told me to. Right. And I'm just not. I'm, I'm going to give you a little nugget right there because, like, that's I got kind of overheated with that no, that's one. Cool. That's cool. Dude. But that's real wisdom, though. You know what I mean? Like, that is real wisdom because what you're literally saying is, I refuse to take on weight that is not assigned to me. Mm -hmm. And if God gives me the assignment, then I know God will grace me to carry the assignment. But if I take this assignment on on my own, this assignment, this assignment has the potential of crushing me in the process. Mm -hmm. And so, I that's, I mean, like, I commend you wholeheartedly for taking the time to say, you know, I'm going to wait for God to answer this moment for me. And then I'm going to do whatever God tells me to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to take on that responsibility. Get into that space and God said, I never told you to do that. You know, you'll be looking at God like God, why you why you got me in this situation? Why why am I here? Why are you not responding to me? And God'll be like, Well, I didn't put you there. You did that on your own. Mm -hmm. And so I just hands down, man, kudos to you. You know? Thank you, kudos to you because you definitely deserve that. Like we should take moments like that when we know for a fact we have made God proud to celebrate that. Oh, that's gonna make me cry. So I celebrate you, for real, I celebrate you because like, you know how much maturity and strength it takes to say, I love you and I want to be there for you, mm -hmm. but I refuse to move outside of God's will. Right. That's, that's a whole different level of strength and maturity that most of the time we don't see in our walk and we don't talk about in our walk. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm happy for you to even be able to present and talk this information out. Mm -hmm. You know? It's okay to cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> it's okay to cry. I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. um, like, I really, I think the first day we went there, because we went there two days in a row. Two days in a <laughs> row. Right. Um, But the first day was very tense for me, mm -hmm. because it was weird, because I... I feel like we took time to drive there, mm -hmm. but when we got there, he didn't trust us. Right. And I'm looking at him like, <laughs> not him, I'm talking about my dad. Like, Man. really, dude? I didn't take my time to be here. Though. Yeah, he is very standoffish 
in some case he doesn't yeah. trust yeah so kind of like me um but <laughs> <laughs> you see i just yeah he's very tough with that but i knew what we did was the right thing right. but the second day we went up there which was two days ago on tuesday so this is all fresh um it was a good visit yeah it was a good visit yeah. I got to ask him some questions and learn about him. They got to talk and laugh. Yep. Um, and in that moment, those moments are so hard for me because I've had a moment like that with him before. Mm -hmm. Those moments give me hope where yeah. it's like, okay, he is gonna show up the way he's supposed to as a dad. Yeah. And then he kind of like rips the rug from and under me back. and goes backwards. So I'm like, okay, God, I don't want that to happen this time, but I also don't want to push it. I'm not going to push it. Um, because even the next day he texted me yesterday and said he loved me. So it's like, I'm used to getting that. Mm -hmm. Like he'll do it for like a good week mm -hmm. and then take it away. So Fall back into like that old pattern. But yeah, I don't want you to be frustrated with that because that second day was like us hitting a game winning jump shot. Like, <laughs> like for real, like to see that man be in his condition and allow you to bring a smile on his face that right there I was like you know what he needed that more than the other oh god you know what I just thought of I just keep getting hot in this conversation <laughs> he definitely needed that moment with you more than anything else because that allowed him to say you know what I may not have shown everything I was supposed to as a father but my my daughter is teaching me how to love unconditionally and man to see that maybe man, I should have processed this before we got on this recording because <laughs> I keep thinking about that moment that where man. I fed him yeah so um come on he's come on. look just to give y'all history because y'all don't know me like that uh, some of y'all do, but not a lot. So my dad is paralyzed from the motorcycle accident. Wow, so he I did not know that. Hmm? I didn't know that it happened. Like his, he became paralyzed from the motorcycle accident. Mm -hmm. So I met him while he was in bed, couldn't move. So that that's a whole nother story that I would love to share about my feeling on that visit. But this time around, like uh, I noticed him. Just, just because we don't want to. <laughs> We don't want to run past well, that. Look, how did Tim Ross always right. be like, let's sit here. Because I'm sit. watching it. <laughs> Can we slow down? Because I see things in visuals. So watch watch what God did. God took his mobility away. Mm -hmm. Don't scream now, babe. We ain't got to scream. I'm just, I'm just saying, right? <laughs> God took his mobility away in order for you to be able to catch up where he was moving. So that he can't run. <laughs> you know what I want to say. <laughs> right yeah yeah right. but that's his, like man how amazing i was just that? joking when i said it but of course but joking but not joking man, how amazing is that god says all right you didn't do what i tell you to do back then i'm okay i'm gonna make mm. sure you can't run from it this time mm. so i'm gonna sit you down i'm gonna take your mobility away so that you can at least have a moment or two in your lifetime where you get to experience what I gave you, what I blessed you with in your children. Mm. It's, it's messed up sometimes. I get God myself gotta together. Us. Like, and I, I've, listen, I've been that father, right? Mm -hmm. Where God had to literally whoop me time and time again in order to get me to sit down to be like, go, for him to even be like, go restore your family. I'm I'm just grateful that it didn't take something almost killing me. Yeah. Something like something Stop. Yeah, I get it. Completely changing my entire <laughs> functionality of life. You know what I mean? That you actually can play basketball with your son. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I can actually go to the game or go to the the events where he's going to be at and watch him. You know, and not be worried about Oh man, I, I ain't the regular man. I wish you would have met right, me back then. Mm -hmm. I wish you would have met me when I had the mobility, when I could do other things, when I could run, jumping. Like man, I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. 
So I love God for the opportunity that he has given not only your father, but you to be able to catch up to him and have that stillness in him. Yeah, I mean, that is, of course, the the best way to look at it. Mm -hmm. But that's not the way I looked at it back then. Mm -hmm. Even now, I kind of struggle with that because I didn't have a mobile dad. You know, yeah. so I don't have a mobile dad. So you don't now. have that memory, really. Right. Got gotcha. you. Right. Like, I had talked about it before. I even said it on a podcast once. We were talking about dads, and I think I had chimed in. And I even wrote about it on my social media, the fact that he won't be able to like stand up and dance with me. Mm. That kind of stuff at my wedding. Yeah. Different things. But I don't know, it gives you a, a different perspective yeah. because he still can dance. I mean, you yeah, know, it's just gonna be, be different. He gonna turn that. <laughs> um, he gonna get it. But feeding him in the hospital. Yeah. I think that. Whew. Yeah, yeah. There's so much I could say about that because one, I don't remember him, of course, feeding me. I mean, I was too young. Right. But it makes me wonder if he ever had that experience with me. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Take it there. <laughs> take it, take it there. Yeah. Did you see that emotion? The way I looked at that moment was like, I looked at that moment in a very beautiful sense. Yeah. Like, <laughs> to be, like when you feed a person, you're giving them nourishment, you're giving them life, you know what I mean? And I think that whole second day was for him to receive life. And that's why I kept telling you, we're going in here as light. We're going in here with the presence of God on us, with the energy of God, of who we, who God has created us to be, we're walking in the favor and the anointing of that. And we're yeah. going in here and we're going to represent the God that we believe in. And so when we walked in there. Oh, I don't want to mess my makeup up. <laughs> <laughs> I did my eyes cute today. When we walked in there though, and that light came in with us, and you took your time to feed him, like, we we will never know what that did for him because we don't know how God was working on him in that moment. Do you know how that would have broken me down as a man, though? Like, as a man that has made same, some of the same mistakes that he's made. Is that you? Yeah. I would have been, I would have been broken down to my core like the person that I did not take the time to nurture feed and care for has come down to where I'm at to nurture and feed and take care of me yeah, yeah. and I have to tell you I truly believe that God is extremely proud of you. It's okay. It's all right. Go ahead. You let it out. It's all right. We ain't gonna worry about your eye paint today, okay? Well, I didn't want them to put anything in front of me because they would be like, "What? You want to go over there?" It's all good. But I truly, I truly believe God is extremely proud of you. For that. You know, and you, you know, you look at God like your father. We've had that discussion many times. Yeah. And, and you, his baby girl, you know, and to have God be like, I'm proud of you. You are who I created you to be. And you handled that moment in the way that allows God to continually bless you and your family. I'm gonna talk in a minute. Yeah. So coming, this is coming from a person who understands both sides of that right. that fence. You know, mm -hmm. like I was that father, but I was also the child. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that that child inside of me still craves my father's attention. Mm -hmm. 
in such a way that it has caused me to look at God from a perspective of I can't I can't call you father because right. I'm used to my father's abandoning me. Yeah. So I can't see you in that way, God, because yeah, I'm going to expect you to abandon mm -hmm. me. Then. Right. And so I have to, man, if that ain't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whew. So I have, I look at God like, okay, God, you are my king and I'm a king under your authority. So what you tell me, I must do. Yeah. But I love you and you love me. But I have been that child that has been abandoned, mm -hmm. that has been left, who craves the father's attention, and who does not have who did not have an understanding as to why you left me. I've been I've been that kid. But then I've also been the father that like I know I got this responsibility, but life is life right now. Right. I know I need to be there, but all these other excuses are coming up. Right. I don't know how to just get rid of these excuses and be in that space. I don't. I don't know what it is to be a father. I ain't never had one. Right. So I, I get it. I get both sides. Talk up a little bit. What I get both that? sides, and to have, like, even even in my relationship now with my sons. You don't have to dig into it. I won't. But to be in a space now where wisdom has set in on me mm -hmm. and I'm starting to learn and love and that exchange is happening it's uh it's humbling but it's also a beautiful experience I never yeah. thought that I would be as open as I am right now I never thought that I would be as um it's a new level of masculinity Something I have not experienced. Yeah. I'm glad you get to experience it. Like, I don't want to... This is not what this episode is about to, like, say what's going on on that mm -hmm, side. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that right now you're having a chance to step into restoration before your kids are in their 40s. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, uh... It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Well, how did you feel not being able to reach out to your other siblings and have them come and oh, support you? Oh, that ain't you? a difficult question. Okay. Yeah. Cool. N nothing. <laughs> nothing. I, okay. <laughs> Explain. I Elaborate. mean, I didn't feel nothing. My brother may even end up seeing this. Um, I didn't reach out because, one, it was a very fast, like, mm -hmm. and I was down there for a reason to take care of some stuff. Yeah. Um. Something. But if we had gotten there and things had went differently, mm -hmm. I would have reached out gotcha. to one. The other one I can't even reach out to. Yeah. But my big brother, I would have let him know, like, right away, hey, this is going down. You need to get down here. But it wasn't that case. We walked in, and he was. Right. right. Yeah, he was good. Right. So, yeah, not a hard question. Okay. That, that's wisdom. Yeah. That's wisdom. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine being in your shoes. Let me just say that, right? Like, I, I, just, I couldn't imagine being in your shoes. I don't think, I think some people can, but can't at the same time. Yeah. I don't know. Um, in that scenario, I just, like, I haven't. There's so many ways for me to look at it. Yeah. I think that's why, like, of course, there's that responsible side of it where it's like, okay, I'm here to take care of business. Right, right. And then there's that other side of, like, make sure I show God's love yeah. and how he created me to be. And then there's that little kid feeling, too, where I, it almost takes me back to a space of being a kid. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that I have to remember that my adult self needs to take care of my inner child self. Right. Because I will go backwards oh. and I'll sit in that. And that's when the bad, or not bad decisions, but the decisions that aren't in alignment with what God wants me to do. Because right. then it feels like I just want my daddy to love me. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I got to be here. I got to do this. I got to do that. Right. And then my feelings get hurt if this don't go this way. Right. And I'm like, I have to show up. This is my, this is my dad. This is who God gave me. Right. God, what do you want me to do in each moment? So going back to when I fed him. 
I remember, I don't know if we talked about it, but I remember when he called the nurse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he asked the nurse to come in. I didn't know what he was calling the nurse for. So he calls the nurse to come in to feed him. And I'm sitting there like, confused. Like, why wouldn't he right. ask me? Right. Because everybody has that <laughs> expectation, right? Like, if we're that close to family, yeah. I'm going to feed my parents, my parents are going to feed me. But he's so out of disconnected from me he doesn't even know my heart right he didn't even know it was okay to ask me right and it kind of irritated me <laughs> like i was irritated like why the hell would he not right. ask me and i'm standing right, right here you're gonna ask somebody you don't even know um so after he asked i asked him i don't remember how i asked him but then i say something like why didn't you ask me yeah or, yeah and i don't remember what his reply he was he was just like well, i don't know Okay, so I was just like, I'll do it. But feeding him is like, that's where this like pool of emotions mm -hmm. comes. And I really had to not be in my human side. Yes. That was more of my, what side do you call that? I think you were just being his child in that moment, his daughter. Being his daughter, but also being God's daughter. Mm -hmm. So the way I fed him, it was feeding him out of love. Like I was, I was even so slow with it to where he told me to speed up. <laughs> Cause I wanted to make sure the food got in his mouth, his mouth stayed clean, you know, stuff like that. Um, but being able to do that, putting chapstick on his lips, um, I wiped his eyes. Um, it was just different. And I noticed he calls me by my first and middle name. Mm -hmm. I had never paid attention to that until that day. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Yeah. I caught that the first day. Mm-hmm. Love to sit and ask God what the purpose of that moment was. Yeah. Because I know there's a lot. I just haven't processed it all. But the thought that you had is one of the thoughts I had, but not in that. And not that deep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like... It's almost like he was in the position that Man. I should have been in, but it also shows me who God created me to be. Like, there's just so much to it. So much to it. Um, God has definitely given me a grace that he has not given a lot of people. Or That's maybe so he true. has and they don't know it. I don't know. So true. Um, but yeah, it's a lot. I'm going to say this to you, right? Mm -hmm. Because you just, you for the family you just corrected a mistake i made about three years ago i'm sorry i don't know what you mean <laughs> i'm gonna explain it okay can you feed what tried to kill you mm. and i say that in the sense of our our fathers like our biological mm -hmm. dads um I have half siblings and I ended up meeting their mother mm -hmm. face to face. And I think it was our second time meeting. And then our second time Hold meeting. Hold on, that's gonna be real loud. And second. in our second time meeting, uh, she asked me to take on the responsibility. <laughs> they just live in, they just live in life. That's okay. So, okay. well, no, still no, because I just feel like if they sit right there, there's, there's gonna be a conversation piece. So, just go back just a little bit. So, I can. okay, it was, it was our second time meeting, mm -hmm. right? And this time, she asked me to take on the responsibility of caring for our father financially while he lives overseas wherever where he's he at and is he sick nah he's, he's, according to my understanding he's a healthy individual this is a conversation offline go ahead so but in that moment my answer was no 
but not from a place of God did not and God God answered me and said, "No, nah, your answer is no." Mm -hmm. It was from a place of no. <laughs> you, your facial expression, like, yeah, no, you, are you crazy? <laughs> and in my heart, I was like, "You have the audacity to right. ask me." to care for the man mm -hmm. you committed adultery with while my mom was still married to him first of all why you asking me anything <laughs> <laughs> you hear me so yeah. my response was from a different place yeah. and you know i just want to commend you because you corrected a mistake that i made so you know, as the as the head of a family, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for having to even put that burden on you spiritually. Like where I failed, you went in and corrected. You know what I mean? I don't feel like it's a burden. This is actually something. Remember the dream I told you, mm -hmm. right? Um, back then, like I've always had dreams my whole life, but I never had dreams to where I was. You know how I am now. Like this dream probably mean right, this. It right. Is, I was never trying to figure out what the dream meant. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, I had this dream. Remember what we talked about with time? Yeah. So maybe God was already showing me what's to come. And right. maybe not in the way that the dream came, but even the thought of, because I had the dream of I was taking care of him. He lived with me. Yeah. But maybe it was just a time is going to come where you need to take care of the people who have let you down. Um. And it's been on my mind heavy since yeah. 2018. Yeah. So it could be him. It could be my mama. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It even gets worse than that. I've even thought about the other one. And uh, God that one. Work with me on that. One. No, God's gonna have to work on me with that one. Yeah. Um, because I, I would, I would offer my shirt off my back to anybody, but my space. I ain't there yet. <laughs> I'm not there. Look, I, I so, love God and I know mm -hmm. God loves me and I know, right. you know, I'm not letting you take your shirt off your back for that one. No, we, we keeping this shirt on. <laughs> no, we not. Yeah, no, I know. Not doing that. But a lot of, and a lot of people will say like, Carly, you crazy. Like even in this setting, um, people will question what you do, especially when it's good stuff. If you're not hurting anybody, they still gonna question like, yeah. what are you doing? So I know it's going to be a lot of opinions. Like, I can't even believe you wasted your gas to go down there. He hasn't done nothing for you and this and that. This ain't y'all's journey. This ain't your journey. This right. is the journey that God gave me. So I know for sure he graced me for it. Right. But I know it's hard too. But it has to be a reason for it. Yeah. It has to be a reason for it. Um, there has to be a reason he's still alive and I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. And that we're at this moment right now. What it is, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know, and I'm going to say this in defense of him. Mm -hmm. uh, your biological, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes I don't need your verbal apology. I need you to change the behavior. Mm -hmm. And like I can find respect in that mm -hmm. and accept his changed behavior as an apology. For his what actions. changed behavior? Like I'm saying, because now I, love. I'm not saying that he has. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. going forward, right? Like change how you in, mm -hmm. exactly change how you interact in and how you present yourself and right. be present. And I can accept that man to man as an apology mm -hmm. to your daughter, and I can respect you. But on the flip side of that, as you got your health and strength, and you ain't even man enough to say I was wrong. Right. You rather carry that lot to your grave. Yeah. I'm I'm just like, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. What are your ending thoughts? I don't know yet. I thought you were gonna walk <laughs> into that. Brand new podcaster, you hear yeah. me? Yeah. Not me. You Not know, her, I, but me. I ain't new to this, I'm true to this. Just new with him. That's all. As a person who's been through some of this stuff, mm -hmm. right? I reflect on how to handle the situation different in the future. Right. By watching how you've handled this one. Um, and it's a beautiful thing when the person you love can teach you lessons that you never know you needed. 
and you didn't teach me with a whole bunch of words and a whole bunch of correction. You taught me through your own experience and your own actions. And for that, I'm grateful. I'm, I'm glad you're the woman that God brought back into my life and has blessed me with. Thank you. Whatever God is doing, I pray for strength. Because yeah. tomorrow we're actually not going to see him at the hospital. Mm -hmm. He's out the hospital. Now he's home. And that's a whole nother ball, ball game for me. Um, so yeah, I don't have any in thoughts except that I am so thankful that he gave me you to hold me up. Okay, so we are approaching the end, the end of this episode, this show. Um, first of all, I just want to shout out my girl, Paula McDade, for gifting me with this shirt. Resilience is, is truly my superpower, which it is. A lot of people say negative things about resilience. Like, you don't always got to be resilient in this and that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to say it like that. But being resilient is just really being able to bounce back. It's not yeah. saying that you can't have your moments um, of being human and experiencing those emotions and that adversity. It's just how are you going to walk through it? How are you going to overcome it? So, yeah, I love resilience. And underneath resilience is like wellness and mindfulness and all that good stuff. So, this is truly me right here. So, Paula, thank you for this shirt. I love it. I don't know if it's on your website or not, but if it is, y'all go find it. Um, but you can find her on um, on social media under Paula Lorraine. Uh, she has a new brand called Daughter of B, T-H-E-E, -E, King. So, that's dope, right? So, she has like some it. new merch out. It's so cute. So, go look for that. So, I wanted to give a shout out to her. want to give a shout out to this day. It's a special day today, and that's all I'll say. <laughs> He's not letting me say what it is, You're which not. is wisdom, mm -hmm. um, but it is a special day today. So I'm so thankful I could sit here with you mm -hmm. on this special day. And I'll say that. Who else would give a shout out to? Shout out to you kids, man. Like, if y'all watching this, I'm proud of y'all. Like, I see how y'all move and conduct yourself and carry yourself, mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of y'all. Like, y'all carry yourself like good young men and that's mm -hmm. important it's important continue yeah. to do that mm -hmm. keep making your mama proud um i have to throw that in there <laughs> don't forget what i said when you walk out the house the you, you represent oh, babe you can be talking over me I'm sorry. i said keep making your mama proud like i told you when you walk out the house you not only represent yourself but you represent god you represent your mama you represent the family Look, I had to look straight into the camera when I said that. I want to say thank y'all for supporting yet again uh, Coffee with Coco, showing up every week. Don't forget to like, share, and follow us on YouTube, please. Um, and also, thank you for your support with our coffee. I know we show up on here um, at locations, so different locations with coffee, but we like to you know, support other local places as well. Mm -hmm. But thank you for supporting us. Absolutely. We're local right now, but we will be worldwide. Being local, though, I gotta be honest. I said we local, but not local. We man. in the U.S. We been in multiple states in the U.S. Right. Don't that's us not be. local. No, that's not local. Oh, local my bad. Is in your local. We are not local. Oh, we, so what are we called? We, we right now we in the United States of America. We not local. My we bad. all over the U.S. Okay. If you want your bag, go out to CocoBeansCoffee.com. Grab your bag or two. Let us know how you like it. Send us a DM on Instagram if you want to. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really have nothing else. What was that? I was a leap. <laughs> I was a leap. You see that reaction time is still there. <laughs> you jumped like it was a lizard. You're right, I was right. ready to swing. Thank you. For Thank you again. In. Coffee with Coco. Y'all have a good day, okay? Love you.